Here we have an example where we're going to try to optimize profit with a bit of a twist. Here we're going to have two different markets. We're going to have a domestic and an international market problem with different pricing schemes for each. So let's get to this example. So you make a product that you distribute to both a domestic and international market. The domestic price P1 and inter international price are listed below. So we have a domestic price and an international pricing based on different quantities, different demands, and different pricing. Now we have a total cost function as well. That's right here, where our quantity is the combined Q1 into Q2. Now what is the maximum profit with price discrimination? What price should you set to achieve this maximum profit? So the idea here is that these two prices between the domestic and international market, the way we price it is going to be different. That's price discrimination. So with price discrimination, P1 is not necessarily equal to P2. They're different prices. So we're gonna look at each of these markets independently. Before doing that, I wanna lay out a basic concept about revenue and cost and profit and when maximization of profit is going to happen. So if we examine, now this is a general concept. So if we have profit, profit is going to be equal to revenue minus cost. Now when we want to optimize profit, when we want to look for a maximum profit, we look for where that slope is equal to zero, where that first derivative is equal to zero. So if I were to do the derivative of profit to quantity, what I would be doing essentially, I'd be taking the derivative of TR minus TC all in terms of quantity. Now to do the sum difference rule, this is the same thing as D over DQ of TR minus D over DQ of TC. So it's the difference of those two derivatives. This right here, this value right here, that is the same as our marginal revenue. And this right here, that's the same as our marginal cost. So our derivative of profit is really the difference between the derivatives of marginal revenue and marginal cost. Now we want this slope to be equal to zero at a maximum, the slope would be equal to zero. So solving for that, I'm going to move MC over here. MR is going to be equal to MC at a critical point for profit. So our marginal revenue and our marginal cost are the same at those critical points. And we're going to use this concept to help solve this problem. So let's look at each market independently. Let's start by looking at the domestic market, our domestic market. So for our domestic market, we have the price 90 minus 3Q1. P1 is equal to 90 minus 3Q1. We've got a general cost equation. TC is equal to 250 plus 5Q. Now Q is not the same as Q1. Let's be mindful of that. Q is really Q1 plus Q2. So this is really the same as 250 plus 5Q1 plus 5Q2. And if we're not considering our international market, we can treat this like a constant. Remember, when we're doing um, pricing without dis with discrimination, we're treating each market independently. So this is irrelevant. Our Q2 is irrelevant in um, this problem. So looking at this, I can do my TR is going to be equal to P1 times Q1, which is going to be 90 minus, let's give myself more space, 3Q1 times Q1 or 90Q minus 3Q1 squared. And total cost 
is going to be equal to 250 plus 5Q1 plus 5Q2, and we're going to treat Q2 like a constant. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is going to be the derivative of total revenue. And that's going to give me 90 minus 6Q1. And I'm going to take marginal cost. Marginal cost is going to be the derivative of our total cost equation that we have right here which is going to be equal to, well, the derivative of a constant is zero, so it's going to be five, and the derivative of Q2 here, it's going to be treated like a constant because it's independent market, is also going to be zero, so MC is equal to five. So now I'm going to set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost to solve for this problem. Solve for where that critical point is and I get 90 minus 6Q1 is going to be equal to 5. Rearranging this equation, I get 90 minus 5, 85, is equal to 6Q1. Dividing both sides by 6, I get Q1 is equal to 14.17. Now the associated price with that P1 is going to be equal to pulling this equation that I got for price way back here, 90 minus 3Q1. So I have 90 minus 3 times 14.17. This is going to give me pricing of 47.50. That's the price one to maximize my domestic market. I can further determine what the revenue from this domestic market is going to be. Is going to be is going to be P1 times Q1, which is going to be 47.50 times 14.17, which is going to be 672.92. So this is my revenue from my domestic market. Now we're going to examine our international market. So for our international market, we've got this price equation. So price is equal to 490 minus 7Q2. So once again, I'm going to try to get my revenue equation. Revenue is going to be equal to Q2 times P2, which is going to be 490Q2 minus 7Q2 squared. My total cost is still going to be the same as it was before, 250 plus 5Q1 plus 5Q2. But this time when looking at the international market, I'm going to treat the domestic market like it's constant because it doesn't in influence my international market if I treat them as independent markets. So now coming up with my marginal revenue, I get the derivative of this equation right here, 490 minus 14Q2. And coming up with my marginal cost, I have the derivative of this equation right here. The derivative of 250 is going to be zero. The derivative of 5Q1, well, that's going to be treated like a constant because it's part of a different market. And then I've got my 5 for Q2. I'm going to make my marginal revenue equal to my marginal cost. And this is going to give me 490 minus 14Q2 equal to 5. Rearranging these equations to solve for, 14, for, for Q2, I should say. I have 485 is equal to 14Q2. Dividing both sides by 14, I can solve for Q2. And I get 34 0.642 for my Q2. The associated price, 490 minus 7Q2. I'm going to substitute 34.642 in there, and I get 247.50. So I can price very differently for that international market. I have $200 more being charged in that international market.
So now I've got my revenue for market two, our international market. It's going to be Q2 times P2, which is 34.642 times 247.50. And this is going to give me 8,500, $8,573.90. Now to get my maximum profit, I'm going to have my total revenue minus my total costs. Well, I have total revenue for market one plus total revenue for market two minus total costs, and this is going to be based on markets Q1 plus Q2. So Q1 plus Q2, my Q1 from market one was 14.17. And for market two, I had the quantity 34.642, which gives me 48.81. So substituting that into my total cost equation, total cost, way back here I have my total cost equation of 250 plus 5Q. It's going to be 250 plus 5 times 48.81 which is going to give me 494.05. So now I'm going to take my total revenue from market one, right here, 672.92, plus my total revenue from market two, $8,573.90, minus my total cost of 494.05. Let's lower that a bit. I made it a little bit high. This is all for profit, and my profit ends up being $8,752.77. Actually, I shouldn't give that units because I don't know what the units are, so let's just leave it at that. This maximum profit value of $8,752.52, not dollars, 0.77, occurs when P1 is equal to our maximum price here, oh, sorry, our optimal price here, 47.50 for our domestic market, and our optimal price here for our international market, 247.50. And there we have it. We've priced our domestic and international markets and come up with our maximum profit.